I guess to be clear. Today we're going to be taking a look at the French Destroyer play. We got a game in the box, tier 6, French Destroyer. We got Violet. You can run a boy, no, you can run Violet. The choice is yours. I think you can get a good build out of either of them. Uh, we happen to have our points in Violet. Sleeping Giant Domination Mode. Uh, we'll just be kind of going over what to be doing in these French Destroyers. Generally pretty strong, uh, tier 5 and up especially. Good hard hitting guns, flat firing arcs, uh, good accuracy of range. Ergo, good at fighting other destroyers, plus you got the reload boost. So if you pick your fights properly, uh, you should have the advantage in that regard. But you don't have the smoke, so you, you got to be paying attention to what you're doing in this thing. Sleeping Giant, we're on the sea side, two destroyers per side. Um, and you can see the other destroyer spawns south of A. He's actually going to go to the west of A. We talk about this a lot. Why is this a bad play, though? Uh, if you play in between A and B as the destroyer, which is what I would recommend doing if you're in the middle or the west, then you have access to A or B and or B. If you play to the west of A, you have access to A, and then you're about five minutes from B, and you have no shots whatsoever. You have no spotting, so I would not recommend making that play. Nevertheless, that's what he's going to do, and it's, uh, we'll see how it works out in this particular game. But we're playing the seaside, two destroyers. We do have the new French destroyer build, of course, which now we have the radio locator due to the new slot three perk. This half moon, you guys see on my screen, I would recommend, you know, I play against a lot of destroyers. You can tell when they have it because it says located on your screen. The closest destroyer to us has the same perk we have. So you can tell when people are using this. I find it odd how often we see in destroyers not playing this. Now that everyone except for the Lo Yang has access to this perk, I would recommend putting it on every single destroyer. That's my opinion. Of course, some people think it's uh, not as helpful as I do, but I think it's extremely useful. It allows us to make plays like this where we're going to launch Torps blind, uh, which you can still do if you don't have that information, but it's uh, much less profitable. It's much less informed. Uh, so we're keeping an eye on that radio locator here. And... Watching this back, maybe we can continue going a little bit to the north here, playing kind of the eastern edge of this sea. Perhaps we'd get a little bit better spotting angle into the base. We're not really providing any information to our team here. Uh, but what we do know is because we're continuing to capture sea unabated, uncontested, uh, we do know that the enemy destroyers are not close enough to be within sea. And why is that important? Well, on the western edge, of course, it runs into an island, right? So we know they're not coming around the western side of this, flanking us. And really, the only play they have is to come around north here, which is now the twist and track switches over here. We can see that's what they're actually going to do. We do capture the base. Then we come around the island. The timing of that is important. We don't want to get reset after sitting there. And now we pop the reload booster. T61 immediately pops the smoke, trying to disengage, not shooting back. So, of course, we know torpedoes are... Uh, in route, okay, but we're pummeling the, the ship with the damage. We want to take him out, and we do have good support. I believe it's a Helena behind us, chiming in with those guns. So we hit him there, uh, you know, and boom, there goes the Helena. Good teamwork there. Benson coming in out. I didn't see when we looked at the roster if these guys are in a division or not, but unfortunately for the rest of the red team, both of their uh, destroyers, the only ships that are really excelling at spotting for the red team, both come over here and they both lose a combined 75% of the destroyer's health pool for the red team right off the bat within the first three minutes. So devastating losses there. We take very little damage. We'll trade uh, 3,250 damage on our own ship, or HP, I guess is how you would describe it. Uh, we'll trade that for the damage that we took uh, from the enemy team, 15,000 and a half, you can see. And uh, that's one destroyer sunk. Moving in here, we're looking on the map. Where's the support? Not very uh, engaged over here. A lot of them are blocked by behind islands. Yeah, they do have a cruiser in the background, but we're rushing this guy, trying to push in, trying to activate the two kilometer proxy spotting range. If he's sitting in the smoke, we get within two kilometers of the guy. We automatically spot each other. Boom, we start firing. No, he's running though. He's uh, trying to get out of there, which is what he should be doing. Uh, but that's why we're rushing in here. We're trying to get around the smoke. We don't want him to get so far that by the time we come around the island, he's uh, not able to be spotted. Uh, but we do find him, kill him. They're down two destroyers. Our uh, other destroyer, of course, did not do so hot on A. It didn't look like he really knew what he was doing. Based on the deployment, that's fine. We're still in the driver's seat in this game. 
Hood pulling through here. We're taking some shots. Not that big of a deal here. Yes, we are spotted when we're shooting here, but the we're looking at the Hood's guns there, of course, pointing southward. And we're setting some fires, getting a little bit of reset or whatever we're doing over here. Uh, until this guy demonstrates he's a threat to us, that's not that big of a deal. We can stop uh, moving forward and let him continue to go south. That would drop spot because the island would become in between us. Or if he stops moving, then we can continue north and achieve that same line of sight break on both of those islands. So because it was a small gap, we could play that. But now that their cruiser, you can see on the map their backline, Betty Helena, first time he's really been able to shoot uh, at least that we're able to tell throughout the entire match but he's shooting at us and that's a problem okay the helena can definitely wreck us uh we want now we're pulling south demonstrating what we we're talking about earlier just breaking the line of sight to those battleships in the mid uh utilizing these islands and once again the helena until he becomes within our firing range which he actually does right there uh he's not really a spotting threat so as soon as he knew there was a destroyer in the area uh then he kind of pursued us a little bit and why would he do that? Well, it's because you can see the battleship threat on the blue team. Three of the four, 75% of our battleship threat caught in a black hole directly south of the uh, island, basically where they spawn. They can't shoot very much. Okay, they definitely can't shoot the Helena, so he's got shots on us. The other battleship uh, kind of playing around the southern side of A. Again, probably no shots there. So the battleships are the main threat to the cruisers. Whenever the cruisers are paying attention to the map and they're saying, well, none of these guys can shoot us, then they can be aggressive against the destroyer. So good awareness there on M. And uh, that's going to force us to kind of make sure we're keeping this big island between us and the Helena. Because once again, he was the one spotting us. Slamming on the brakes here, trying to get shots in this Tennessee. He is low. Now, destroyers shooting battleships, not going to be the main source of damage against them usually. But in these situations where they're low health, we can potentially chime in. Okay, if there's no cover between me and this guy and he's got 40,000 health, I don't shoot him because I don't win that fight. I don't do enough damage to him to make a difference here. But because we're taking free shots here, we're not spotted. We're utilizing the islands. And the guy's low. You know, we're getting some fires on him. Boom. Okay, now we combine with the team, take him down. Now, at this point in time, the team's got a healthy ship lead. Looks like a pretty kind of runaway game here. Unfortunately, the longer you spend in a black hole the more damage the universe actually does to your uh, ship that you're in. We don't know that much about black holes, but we do know it's very stress-inducing on your... Uh, <laughs> whatever you happen to be in, whether it's your own skin or a ship or whatever it is. Uh, so those guys are about to go down, and the game's about to become even in terms of that. We're recognizing the threat here. We're trying to get on B, but look at the position on the map here. This Helena, he's been doing a good job pursuing us, and we need to make sure... That we're not going to be spotted by him. Now, this is a very risky play. We got red to the south, we got red to the west, and we got red pursuing us to the north. I'm hoping he's going around towards C, so that's, you know, I'm trying to get away from that guy. Uh, but essentially, we're surrounded on three sides here. We talk about this a lot with destroyers. When you're surrounded by red, and the more surrounded you are, the more in danger you really are. This is a very <laughs> kind of nauseating play to watch back here. A little reckless, okay? Finally, we realized the Helena is hot on our tail here. Uh, launch some torps that way. I was hoping to kill this Leon, capture B, and then maybe square it off into A. Uh, but the fact that this Helena continues to pressure the destroyer very well uh, is really putting the squeeze on us. So now that the enemy killed a bunch of our black hole weakened ships, it's only a 4 to 3 advantage. We do have A and C. Now, they haven't managed to capture any bases. So that once again suggests we need to be playing much more conservatively than we are now because we got the background score handled, right? Okay, even if they happen to get B, um, you know, we still have that two cap to one advantage. Hood about to go down here. I'm trying to capture this base. I'm trying to make sure the Helena doesn't get in that blue ring on the map at the same time. So very close. We're right at the edge of the ring there. We actually squirt through there, unfortunately. But even if we slammed on the brakes and played that perfectly, I don't think we could have safely... Uh, evaded that shot or you know I don't think we could have safely captured that base I should say because I think we were about to be spotted I was shooting over this island thinking that maybe the island would block our line of sight but the Leon to the northwest is actually a ship that's spotting us regardless so not a good pro not a good play at all here uh, we do take a lot of damage we need to angle against the Helena who's going to be the main source of damage to us uh, the Leon also a major problem we do have a nice torp strike heading into the Helena we're going to hope to uh, dev strike him here. He slams on the brakes. He only eats 
Yeah, he just eats the first one there, and you can see how hard these French torps hit, okay? Generally very fast in the water, and generally very hard hitting, so... That's kind of the case for Oboino, is they're, the torpedoes are extremely effective. I like the Violet build because we still have a nice effective destroyer build as well. But we got a little bit of the uh, anti-incoming dispersion build on there as well. Chiming in with the guns here, uh, get a reset on the Helena. Not necessary at that point in time, but uh, wanted to get that ship off the board. He was the main threat to us, right? Okay, at this point in time, if I stop shooting and the Leon doesn't kill me, then it's up to me to make sure I don't die, right? Like, as long as I'm not screwing off, basically this Leon can't <laughs> physically kill me at that point in time, and he can't win the game. Okay, so Helena, that's that equation changes a little bit. The cruisers are more in control against the destroyers than the battleships are trying to counter them. So at this point in time, all we have to do is just, you know, eat this guy alive with the torps, and the game should be over. Uh, so... Ended up being a fairly tight game, even though our team came out uh, swinging on top there early. The deployment really was kind of limited. It's a very common deployment in this game. A lot of it's like two brothers, where a lot of games uh, the players will basically just drop anchor more or less where they spawn and play the first half of the game. There, you do want to try and achieve a horizontal map uh, control, though. So playing, you know, especially off into the sea flank, but uh, just spreading out a little bit there and trying to control the basically the equator of the map horizontally as opposed to just clumping up in the base. I think it's kind of the key uh, to this. So we're getting a little bit of resets here on the Leon. And notice whenever we're shooting on these things, it's kind of like playing a cruiser where we want to have, we don't need to be behind an island all the time, but we want an island close enough to us that if, okay, the guy decides he's going to start shooting at us, then we just move forward, we move backwards, then we cut the line of sight by utilizing that island, okay? It's the same idea there. Uh, we don't have the smoke, so you got to kind of play it with the cruiser mentality uh, in mind there. So that's a look at the Vok and the French destroyers for you guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships. It's coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. I delivered it from you guys, and we'll see you all later. Peace.